I'm now delighted to introduce uh, Aurelie, to, uh, a lady that needs no introduction. Um, Aurelie had, uh, was recently moved to UCL, but we've had a long partnership with Aurelie in DCU for, for many a year, and uh, delighted she's able to share her insights with us today. So Aurelie, what I will do is, um, are you happy for a 15 and five, five minutes Q&A, 15 minute presentation? Or do you want to yes, long... I'd, I'd probably be do 10 and 10, but let's go for 15 and 5. And if I go way over 15, there's the problem. <laughs> okay, right, right. No bother whatsoever. Okay, right. The clock is starting and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mark, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, so uh, this is my first time presenting at the uh, Moodle Munch, and I'm really uh, privileged to uh, show you what I've learned so far at UCL. Uh, so um, this is about my uh, vision, my view of what we um, uh, do at UCL. I've only started at UCL a couple of months ago as a learning technologist, well, in January. And um, I'm going to show you our approach to supporting academics, digital resources and content within Moodle. And uh, so this is to, um, oh, I can't click through. Yes, <laughs> uh, technology, hey. Uh, this is to map with the area two digital resources of the DG Comp Edu framework, um, specifically with selecting digital resources or identifying, assessing, selecting digital resources, um, but for supporting the academics and to help them select those resources and consider it within the broader learning objectives and context, modifying and building uh, on existing open license, openly licensed resources, but um, especially 2.3 is what we will focus in our example today is to organize digital content as well within managing, protecting and sharing digital resources. But really the approach that I'm going to show is valid for all resource creation, supporting the academics in, in doing all of these management of resources. So um, who are UCL? So um, I joined UCL a couple of months ago and I knew they uh, have worked with colleagues at UCL for quite, quite a few years on and off. And, uh, but I knew they were a big university, but um, we're, it's not just big, it's massive. So 11 academic faculties made of many, many more departments. Uh, over 43,000 students and over 14,000 employees. Uh, so it's a big institution. And as a result, there are a lot of different practices with regard to digital education um, and uh, a lot of different um, technologies used, a lot of a, a wide variety of practices uh, in terms of the competency uh, framework that we've talked about as well and, and levels of application of digital education. Um, who are we? So our team are digital education, uh, digital education support, and we're supporting the digital education across UCL, uh, but each of the departments and faculties also have additional digital education uh, support in various degrees. So we are the digital education core, my team, and uh, we have six learning technologists and three, um, uh, what we call this is, who are doing support work with uh, mainly, but we do documentation, training, uh, anything that's to, to do with the core system, which is basically Moodle and additional services that uh, enable digital education. Then departments might have additional technologies that they license locally for their department and support themselves. Um, we then have, as part of digital education, uh, we are a really wide team. We have a digital uh, education advisory. Some of you may be familiar with the uh, UCL baseline. Uh, which um, uh, so we used in my previous university experience at Crunchy University to adapt to make our um, uh, framework uh, for uh, approaching module development and design and checklists as well and MOT. Um, so that's on the wiki and a lot of people are familiar with that as done by the education advisory team and then we've got the future teams looking at new technologies um, at the moment there's a lot of things around immersive spaces etc digital skills development um, and digital accessibility are kind of the, the same sub team of digital education as well we've got online learning which is more the cpd external faces another moodle uh, uh, called Extend, that some of you may be familiar with. And then we've got the faculty and department learning technologies, uh, learning technology um, 
head, so faculty, and they will support the department specifically with their needs and represent them within our team as well. So I sit within the core team. And so what do we do? We solve problems um, and, and, and with regard to these aspects I've just mentioned earlier, which is the selecting digital resources, um, managing, protecting, uh, share digital content and resources. How do we do that? Uh, we have obviously learning technologists uh, with uh, looking at different tools, uh, analyzing different technologies. Uh, we've got the baseline that I've just mentioned. Um, and templates that go with the baseline, the connected learning template, which is aligned with the baseline and help academics with a starting point. We've got the wiki, and we've got Moodle and a variety of plugins and third party services. So I've actually had to put a list together in front of me. Uh, so we've got Moodle, H5P, Blackboard Ally, um, uh, Mahara, my, called My Portfolio. We've got uh, Electric Lecture Capture, uh, which is Echo 360, which is plugged into this as well. Connection of Timetable and Student Record System, Opinio, Collaborate, Zoom, Teams, <laughs> all, uh, all, all the um, uh, video uh, content that you can imagine, Turnitin. Uh, wise flow and Mentimeter, um, and there are many more, but these are the key core um, tools that people have if they need to. So they need a lot of support, documentation, and guidance as to what's appropriate for uh, the context, which is in that area of uh, area two of the digital education framework. Um, and so how we approach this at uh, in core is we work with uh, the learning applications teams if you want um they might not be happy for me calling them that but they're the more techie side of things and we together as what we call a squad we support uh, moodle as a product uh we work in an agile approach uh so so um uh, an approach that enables collaborative uh, time, content, um, and chunked approach to developing uh, software normally, but in our case to improving Moodle as a product and the attached services. And just as a caveat, I am new. So everything I'm discussing today is from our observations in the last couple of months and discussions with colleagues. And um, things are changing a lot as well as we're working in an agile way. So how do we do it? Uh, we uh, do a um, story mapping. So um, we're not just doing requirement gathering in the sense that we don't, uh, for those familiar with MOSCO uh, require prioritization, we don't just get requirements like that. We talk with the users, we try to get the story. So learning about the issue we're trying to solve. Uh, we then do some testing, documentation, feedback, and try to apply continuous improvement as well. So, um, just so that we can, uh, I can give you some kind of illustration. I'm going to take you on a little story uh, of a request from like the initiation to the implementation. I'm going to try and do that very quickly. Um, so we have an academic who has a problem uh, with the amount of content and resources they have in their student pages. And they just can't remove the content. The content's there and their issue is with the pandemic happening and additional asynchronous learning material, they have uh, had to put more content and they need to find a solution to present those resources, and develop the resources appropriately and activities in Moodle to make them more navigable, more accessible, more um, approachable for the students and their learning path. So they talked about it at their next faculty teaching committee and um, here uh, so this this is a picture of how committees now are, are obviously uh, it's not a round table uh, it's 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 a, a teams meeting <laughs> and there was uh, our digital education service manager Jason in this case but it could have been a learning technologist anybody from our team listening and trying to capture that uh, requirement uh, of uh, they need a solution to help them deliver those resources. And so then the next step is to understand the story. So trying to discuss this with, with the person and trying, so trying to understand who they are or the audience are we're trying to help. What would this, the solution, the plugin, whatever we're talking about, help them do better? So our aim is to help academics 
and students do better. Uh, what does uh, the solve problem look like? So what would the image in the solution um, feel like in a way? Um, and um, then we research the different technological solution. Um, it's not always a plugin. It could be an RCI connection. It could be a completely different service. It could be just a tweak to an existing con uh, course or configuration in Moodle. And we have a checklist. So for anything that's plugin and LTI, we actually go through a structured approach to ensuring the technology solution is reliable, complies with data protection and accessibility. And these checklists sort of make us um, more in line with this uh, um, digital competency too of um, um, having all these checks happening to make sure things are shared. We try and uh, favor open source as well, and things are up to date and accessible and data protection is kept as well. And then this is me. <laughs> Uh, we test the technology with the steps uh, the story has helped us establish. So we actually check against what we are trying to solve, not just, um, just functional testing without purpose. Uh, once we've done the testing and we do, we do the documentation, sometimes it happens it's kind of in parallel. Uh, so we document the usage. As you can see an example here, what we have found for this person is a flexible format course content. So it's a little bit like great for those who are familiar, but has additional uh, content in there. And uh, with the flexible format, we gave them something called structured label, which is an additional resource type, which enables them to have a more visual approach with tabs, well, or buttons, if you want, with links at the bottom. So it structures the content, make it more visual, break it down. And that's what they needed in this case. So usage, limitations, pitfalls, non-issues. In this case, there were a couple of limitations that didn't stop us implementing the solution, but actually we had to document it because there was a technical issue with adding more than three buttons or tabs. When you edit them, it was actually um, stopping you uh, displaying them. So you have to make sure you reopen and all that is under the caution uh, part of the wiki. And we obviously will add training uh, for those implementing those uh, course formats. We get some feedback. So we have what we call sprint demos. I'm not sure how much I've mentioned that in the start, but all these cyclical uh, development activities happen over a two week period. So we've got a sprint period of two weeks where we um, uh, review is it plugins, et cetera. And then we will uh, look at implementing them or, or make changes and start again the sprint. Uh, so the sprint demo at the end of two weeks will show what we've done to the broader team or to um, um, the, our, our colleagues. We also review the story with the user themselves and solutions and potentially make some changes or configuration change or actually decide to not implement it if it's not suitable. And then finally, we deploy it. So this is happening next week. Well, this week, sorry. <laughs> We're going to have three new plugins out uh, following this requirement, uh, the structured label, flexible format for this person, and a cloud for another completely different requirement, which is uh, um, um, what was called lab tutor for people wanting to do science uh, labs online. And then potentially we repeat, and it can be a bit of a roller coaster. It's kind of fast paced. You go through a lot of things, um, but it's extremely rewarding to be able to give the academics what they need for teaching when they need it. And uh, this is what we're trying to achieve here. There are downsides to it, which is you can't start something um, straight away for the next uh, sprint, for example, you have to prioritize that. But it does mean that we can help and deploy things quite quickly if they are suitable. But it also means that we are quite strict with our checklist. And if the code is not right or it's not supported properly, we will not implement it. Um, any questions? I'm going to have to, um, what I'm going to do is stop the share, I think, because I can't see the chat and I can see lots of things in the chat. 